Fair Trade Network contributor Jenny Horn to the show uh, to set things up here. Uh, the consumer product, uh, oftentimes associated with its speaker systems that interact in kind of a smart fashion, a very interesting company, and one that's had a really, really nice run over the last year and some change. Absolutely. So this is one of these high growth tech names we talk about a lot that have witnessed sort of a degree of rotation now, falling about 5% ahead of its earnings today. Well, what is interesting, I actually think about Sonos is a lot of its tech peers saw this weakness hit at the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. This stock, you know, rallied up until about April 14th when it hit all time highs of $44 a share and now has fallen about $12 off cents. So it's sort of interesting to me that this stock sort of waited to take a pause. So so it makes me wonder if something else here is going on, but this is obviously a highly competitive space and earnings that which will be announced today post market are actually expected to grow, you know, despite some of this weakness we're seeing in the stock activity lately. So analysts are expecting a year over year rise in revenue of about 44% from a year ago with quarterly losses totaling around 22 cents a share, which would signal growth of still 54%. So despite the fact that they're not able to turn a profit or expected to not turn a profit, they are still growing year over year, which I think is a good sign. Now, another thing that's interesting about Sono is it is high end. I mean, these are speakers that are not cheap, not for the faint of heart. Their baseline speaker starts at about $179, with some of their surround sets can costing as much as $1,900. And what I think here is that there's so many players now in this space. What was once sort of dominated by, say, Bose and Sonos, now we have Amazon Alexa's offering different kinds of speakers. We have Apple offering their HomePod speakers. So all of these sort of tech giants are now offering their own version of speakers, which I could see being a head win for Sonos long term. But it is very focused on growth and staying relevant in this competitive market. It announced in early March its entry into the highly popular portable speaker market, which I would say it's about time. I have a jam box I think I bring with me everywhere. But they also announced it earlier in 2020 that they will be offering a new ad-free HD streaming tier of their radio service for about $7.99 a month to compete, of course, with a Spotify and Amazon Music and Apple Music of Pandora. So they are really, really trying to stay relevant. And some of the theme I think we've seen over the last year is similar to that that we've seen in these home furnishing retailers, like say a Wayfair and RH or a Home Depot or Lowe's, where we're just because we're spending more time at home, we want to say purchase more things for our home. So that sort of brings me to our first speaker today, which talks about this extended time spent at home. So she says, the best investment my parents made was in our sound system. These sonos be, be, be keeping me alive working from home when I'm by myself. So I thought this was interesting because it's so true. I mean, there's things we just bought over the past year because you were like, hey, I'm spending so much time at home. I'm not eating out. Maybe I'll splurge on these speakers. So I thought this just sort of speaks to the price activity we've seen over the last year. But our next tweeter sort of focuses on this earnings and some of this price activity around this next earnings report, which we'll get today after hours, which says Sonos earnings released today after the bell. Must keep above 34 spot 52 for some hope and stay above 35 spot 80 for max hope. Otherwise, you see the beginnings of a descending channel, 30 to 33 dollars is possible. Sonos is up 49% overall since January 2021 and is up 267% from one year ago. Careful. So I love this because it sort of highlighted something I believe we all discussed yesterday where it depends really the time frame you look at with these companies. You look at a year to date chart, it's actually fairly strong. You look at a three year chart, it's very strong. And you look at say a month to date or a week to date chart, it sort of paints a different picture. But all things considered, Kevin, I would say that there's a degree of stickiness, which we often talk about with these tech names in Sonos, because say you purchased a Sonos speaker, you're more likely to purchase another Sonos speaker to sort of create this whole ecosystem. I don't believe you'd be purchasing different speakers because they all sort of work in tandem. So I would say all the people that started investing in Sonos over the last year will most likely continue investing because they all work in tandem, Kevin. Jenny, you brought up a lot of, of the most important points about Sonos is that Full disclosure, this is a very competitive market, and there's a lot of big players. Now, other full disclosure, Sonos are fabulous products. The wireless speakers that you can hook up to basically through Wi-Fi to your phone and the music on your phone, they are fabulous, and they sound fabulous. 
Full disclosure, I have a pair of them. Full disclosure, Jenny Horn, your friend Alex, just got a pair of them for her birthday. So I am not only a purchaser of them, but I have bought them for gifts. They are the highest quality and their ability to tap into the, you know, most people, if you look at homes that are five or 10 years old, have the speakers in the wall that are pre-wired and cost a fortune to put in. Believe me, I, I'll show you the receipts. Uh, these are easy. They're portable. You can move them around from room to room. They are the highest quality sound. So now the valuations on this and their earnings are, that's another story, right? Because as you know, no matter how good this company is, sometimes they get overdone. The stock's down about 25% since uh, the April 14th. So it's corrected significantly here. So this earnings play to turn this around will have to be a big one. Right in terms of the numbers they're putting up and the growth that they they need to show, guys. Kev, the ultimate compliment that you can maybe give a company is buying it as a gift for someone else. Right. Really uh, showing uh, the uh, the expression of positivity you have for for a name like Sonos. But this is really a, a, a unique company uh, in the sense of how everything builds together. Even though it's a premium product, uh, I've always had a pleasant experience with it as well, Jenny. Uh, great setup uh, as always, and we appreciate you joining us uh, as you do on a daily basis here. Uh, have a great rest of your day, and we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. As we say goodbye to Jenny, I want to welcome in Andy Swan, the co-founder of LikeFolio.com. And I think that's the perfect kind of note, Andy, to set this up as we kind of start talking about some of the data here. Uh, another name that reports in the next 24 hours is Canada Goose. And I know that they're completely different companies, but they're both seen as this premium, high-quality product. The difference, as I see it, uh, outside the glaring difference in the products is you buy a one Sonos, you're more likely to be a return customer because it builds on your system. You buy a Canada Goose, you're probably set in terms of winter wear for quite some time. And so the business model for, for a company like Sonos is about making that first purchase. Uh, and when you're looking at this, how important is that kind of a business model uh, when, you're, when you're analyzing a company? Well, it's, it's extremely important. You know, the other big difference between those two companies is that, you know, Canada Goose selling you jackets, you really didn't need because you really weren't going anywhere over the last year, whereas uh, Sonos is selling you speakers and sound systems that you really did need because you weren't going anywhere last year. So I think that's the big difference. And for us, we're looking at there's this balance with Sonos that's really difficult to understand or, or to uh, analyze, and that is how much demand did they pull forward into 2020? And you can see it on this chart of purchase intent mentions from like Folio. So this is people talking about, um, you know, buying the Arc and Move uh, products from Sonos, two of their biggest hits, uh, one, you know, very expensive, $800. Uh, you can see on that kind of second hump right in the middle, uh, a, a, a massive acceleration of adoption of consumer demand for these products as the pandemic started to take hold, like Folio was able to get out in front of this because of this data, put out a bullish report on Sonos under $15. We saw this demand coming into the market. Now, as we get into you know, May of 2021, things are a little different, still higher than what we saw historically. So that's good, uh, but definitely uh, significantly lower than what we saw in 2020. In other words, there was definitely demand pulled forward. But as you point out, uh, that also brings more consumers into their ecosystem, uh, which is good long term. So you've kind of got this dueling narrative, I think, going into earnings. And that is, all right, you had a great 2020 because you pulled forward a lot of demand. How well are you executing on upselling and cross-selling those customers or turning yourself like Kevin into a gift buyer for others? Uh, that's what's going to be the biggest um, you know, point of uh, of the call, I think, for Sonos. And I think it's going to be very difficult for the executives of Sonos to give very clear guidance. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things. This was a once-in-a-lifetime, hopefully, uh, type of event. They benefited greatly from it from a sales perspective. And now it's got to be all about selling uh, those new items into that channel. And it'll be very interesting to see how they report uh, that that's going. You know, Andy, I when I look at this company and I see 
how they have entered this market. And like I said before, you look at any house that's more than five or seven years old, and they've got speakers in the ceilings, right? And I, th this is like a game changer to home sound, much like the iPad or the, you know, the uh, Apple devices were changed to music and how you listen to music. Uh, for someone who has music on a lot at their house and has paid exorbitant amounts of money for speakers and home wiring in a house, I can tell you that this product is really affordable. So the, the, the price tag that you may, it, it may be, you know, it feels expensive, but I, I guarantee you I've spent multiples more than that on a on a inferior product. So uh, the question, though, is how much it was pulled forward and how much data can you show? Your data looks like, correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, it looks like where the data is sitting right now is matching that peak around December of 2019. And... Uh, that, that seems like a fairly positive reaction. And it goes back to that stickiness that we've been talking about. It looks like some of their customers that are having, they're holding on to and becoming, you know, not only buyers of them, but buyers of gifts for them like me, Andy. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. I think the one thing about this chart that troubles me a little bit is that there's no reason to think that there's enough, there's no trajectory towards being able to put up comps anywhere near what they had in the summer of 2020. Uh, it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. So they've created a new baseline at higher levels, which is fantastic. They've got some really difficult comps coming up. Um, you know, and just from a personal perspective, I'll, I'll agree with you on the speakers. We had, we just moved into a house that's maybe 10 or 15 years old. There's speakers in the ceilings and the walls and one of them wasn't working. And a guy had to come out and crawl through the attic to try to figure out where this wire had gone wrong. And I'm thinking to myself, oh. man, if we had just had, you know, something better. But on the other hand, I do think Sonos has, you know, significant competition. Uh, their speakers are really good, but so are a lot of people's speakers. I don't think it's nearly yep. as difficult as it used to be to create a great speaker. And so the competition that they have is really coming along right as, their company was poised to shine. So it's a tough balance with Sonos. No, and especially as kind of smart interaction of technology is really uh, accelerating. And that was really something that set Sonos apart. But Andy, I want to uh, zoom out here a little bit. And obviously Sonos uh, in a unique position here. It's going to have tough comps coming up, as you said. A lot of demand pull forward. We know the interactions uh, between the, the the products themselves and the build on. But general kind of trends you're watching macro trends as well and we read all this about people moving out of cities to more suburb kind of uh, environments starting families getting houses the housing market's booming uh, you just mentioned uh recently moving i believe and when you look at all of that considered isn't all of those kind of macro trends setting up favorably for a company like sonos uh, although as you said uh competition really ramping up as well yeah, absolutely. I think every macro trend that we track, so home renovation up 41% uh, year over year, you know, from really good levels, uh, that urban exodus mega trend that you're talking about, mm -hmm. all of those types of trends definitely in Sonos's favor. In fact, just the quality of entertainment that you're able to stream through devices and then wanting to put that out into good audio experience, I think is another thing that's just, uh, you know, driving people towards these smart speaker, high quality speaker solutions. Um, the question is, can Sonos hold off the competition? How much did they pull forward demand that would be hitting now? Um, and then the big question is, once they get people in that ecosystem, can they convert them uh, over and over again to new products or do they tap out? And I think that's the biggest question for this company over the next uh, two to three years, and it'll be really interesting to see what the early indications are. Um, you know, hopefully management's able to talk with some clarity on that, although I doubt it, uh, on, on tomorrow's call. 
We're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to getting these answers over the coming months and years in regards to Sonos and so many of these other companies. But uh, Andy Swan, it is always a pleasure. The co-founder of LikeFoyo.com. Great insight. Great conversation. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Kev, I think there's.